Grand Grand Yoga. My name is Milo, pronouns they, them, or he, him. Um, I was thinking we'd do a little low back today. So make sure you've got something supportive uh, that you can sit up on and that you can put underneath your low back if we're lying down. So a block is ideal, but if you don't have a block, a towel, or a blanket that's kind of thick enough that it won't smoosh down too much when you um, sit on it or put it underneath you. And then um, I'm gonna get started on our backs actually today. So come down to lying on your back. We're gonna start in a restorative twist. Go ahead and come down flat and then have your support near you, your block or your towel or blanket, whatever you're gonna use. You're gonna draw your right knee up and in towards your chest. Just take a couple breaths. If it's uncomfortable to have the left leg straight here, you can keep it bent. You know, lengthen your low back and lift the lower vertebrae, like just above your sacrum up off the mat a little. So you're extending out, but you're not pressing the low back down. And we're gonna come into a twist. So if you have your leg bent, you're just gonna straighten it for a minute. Once you get into the twist, it probably won't um, feel quite as intense on the hip flexor. You're gonna take your left hand and guide the right knee across. You're gonna bring your right hip up over your left and keep the left shoulder open. So it can be flat on the floor, it can come up a little bit, but you wanna bring your, so your right shoulder, your right arm down to support it. So you don't want your right arm like floating out in space over here. Then you're gonna bring your left knee down, sorry, right knee, but it's on the left side now, down towards the prop. Um, so you'll know if the prop is too low or too high. You wanna get like a nice, sense of twist in the mid to low back, but no pinching and not a sense of like reaching for the floor with your knee, right? You want to rest comfortably. You can close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so. Close the mouth. Start to bring your breath in and out through the nose. deeply as you can into the low belly and low back like you're trying to make some extra space down here between your vertebrae and your outer hip. And soften the rest of the body down as much as possible. You can be looking up here if it's more comfortable for you to be on the left side of your head. You can. she did relatively recently on, I mean, I would say it's on shame and white fragility, although I'm not sure she actually uses the term white fragility, but um, white people dealing with their own internalized racism and like the shame that comes up around it. And, you know, I'm not here to um, idolize Brene Brown. She's got her own limitations in um, a number of ways and she has her own work to do in a number of ways, but she does have some really interesting things to say about shame, hopefully, like that's what she's been studying her whole life. Take one more deep inhale here, and you're gonna exhale to unwind and just lay flat on your back. Again, if it's uncomfortable for you to have the legs out in front, you can bend them and put the knees up, but come to a place where you can rest the hip flexor and the low back on the right side. And just notice anything that might have shifted in the body. Notice the feeling of the legs side to side. If you're ready, you're gonna draw the left knee up and in and just squeeze it for a minute. You can have the right leg bent with the sole of the foot down or straight. 
lengthen the spine so your low back comes up a little bit. So when I say lengthen, I don't necessarily mean totally straight, but to get it into its kind of natural rate of curve. And then take the left knee and the right hand, guide it across and down towards the floor. And then again, you'll put whatever height you need to be comfortable here. I'm gonna stack the left hip over the right and support your left shoulder by bringing the forearm in towards your low back. And then take some of those deep breaths into the low belly and the low back. So one of the many things I was reflecting on after listening to this podcast is just how powerful an emotion shame is how much queer and trans people have to navigate that emotion and how it's both something that's done to us, right? We're not born feeling shameful, um, but also something that then we do to ourselves, right? And I don't just mean queer and trans people, although I have maybe some more personal examples from that. So that decreasing the shame in our world, which is really not a helpful emotion for community or equity or justice, um, you know, has both to do with dealing with the broader structural inequities and the biases and transphobia and homophobia um, and other oppressions that exist in our world. Um, but in the meantime, as we get there, it has to also do with how we deal with the shame that comes up in ourselves, right? Either about um, you know, something about us or something we've done to somebody else. Exhale, slowly unwind, let the left leg rest. Lengthen the low back. Again, knees can be lifted or down. You're gonna draw your belly button towards your backbone. Lift the feet up off the mat. So now your legs are at about a 90 degree angle. Squeeze the inner thighs, draw the low belly up and in. And then just move with your breath for a few more twists. So you can have your arms outside to side or down a little. Try to use your arms as little as possible. You'll exhale the knees over to one side. Inhale, back to center. Exhale the other direction. Keep moving with your breath. Like protecting the low back. So if you're feeling any pinching at any point, maybe you give yourself a support to land on. Maybe you come all the way down to the floor. Or don't come all the way down to the floor. Not feeling back and center and lengthen the spine so your low back comes up off the mat a little but not too much and you're just going to gently lower your feet to the floor just a little core exercise um, one way that we can protect our low back is to keep the core muscles as strong and engaged as we can. It doesn't solve everything, but it helps. Once the feet are down, you're gonna bring soles of the feet together, knees wide, just for a breath. So you can do this without supports, because we're not gonna be here very long. Just kind of neutralize the low back. And then use the hands to help bring the knees back together. Draw the knees into the chest and roll to your side. And then you're going to come up onto hands and knees. You can pad the knees with a blanket. 
towel. And then take a minute to get situated with the wrists right under or just in front of your shoulders and your knees just under or maybe just a teeny bit behind your hips. You're gonna soften the chest and bring the shoulder blades together on the back. Gently draw the low belly up and in. Gently squeeze the inner thighs. And then you're gonna bring your right fingertips forward with the palm in, left foot back. Let's pause in this bird dog. Notice the little adjustments your body's making. Stretch out through your right fingertips and your left heel, but also plug your right upper arm into the shoulder socket and your left thigh bone up into the hip joint. See if you can lift a little bit more with your hamstring than your glute. Let's take a few deep breaths. Inhale, bring the knee and the elbow in. Exhale, lengthen out. Three more deep breaths. down and pause. <sighs> Sigh out through the mouth. Soften the chest again. Bring the shoulder blades together on the back. Low belly draws up and in. Gently squeeze the inner thighs. And then come into bird dog on the other side, lifting the left fingertips up with the palm in. Right heel back. Stretch out and pull into your center. Try to lift more with the hamstring on the right leg than your glute. So, you know, shame is this emotion that is like kind of not useful, but everybody's got it. You know, um, I think it's a reflection of the kind of society we live in in ways that we can't necessarily um, be in community with each other or love one another fully. Um, a kind of scarcity mentality around um, who gets access to what. It's the inheritance of violence and injustice that we have. On an inhale, bring the elbow and the knee in. And then exhale to lengthen breaths. Exhale, bring the hand and the knee down and pause. And then bring your knees wide, feet together, sit the hips back into a child's pose. So the way Brown defines um, shame it won't be word for word, but it's essentially the fear that you are unlovable or won't be loved, right? That something about you makes it so that you are unlovable or don't have access to love. And I don't know if she says this directly in this podcast even, but to me, I just think, well, that's what oppression does to us, right? is designed to make us feel like we are unworthy of love or community or connection. Walk the hands out, tuck the toes, bend the knees, you know, press the hips way back in a nice long back to start and then pedal into one heel and then the other, eventually making your way up to your downward facing dog. Bend into the knees as much as you need to so that you can keep that low back nice and long. And then you're gonna inhale and look forward, start to walk the feet up towards the hands. Take your time, really stretch into the backs of the legs. The more we can loosen 
position and make room for our hamstrings and our hips and our quads, the better off our low back often is because it's not taking that secondary strain tightness from the legs. And we'll meet up in a forward fold. Bend into the knees as much as you need to so that you can bend at the waist and lengthen out through the crown of the head and then have your hands resting on something. And a few breaths here, lengthening the low back. If this bothers your low back, bend the knees more, widen the feet more. Inhale, come to halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, root into the feet, come up to stand, stretch up. Exhale, hands come together at heart center. Inhale, to reach. Exhale, bend, and then you can fold. Inhale, the halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to downward facing dog. Again, prioritize the length in the low back. On an inhale, come forward to plank pose. You can have your knees lifted or you can have them down. Either way, really draw the belly button in towards the backbone and soften the chest. So you're supporting your low back and letting your upper back carry the weight of the pose. Exhale, bend into the elbows, lower yourself as slowly as you can while keeping the hips and the shoulders in alignment to the mat. Untuck the toes and then gently roll the shoulders up and back. Engage the muscles along the spine. If you feel like your low back is crunching, try to even out the engagement all the way up to the shoulders. Exhale, tuck the toes, belly button to backbone, come to hands and knees, and then press up and back to downward facing, three deep breaths. Inhale, look forward, start to walk the feet to the hands. Yeah, so it's not just that oppression causes people who are oppressed to feel shame. Certainly shame is a tool that is used against people in marginalized positions, and it's definitely, definitely been used against queer and trans people um, very aggressively and very blatantly. But if it's also a fear of not deserving love or having connection, meet up in our forward fold. Keep moving with your breath to inhale. Exhale to fold. Root to rise. Hands to heart center. Inhale to lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, plant the hands and step back. Prioritizing the low back, move with your breath, coming forward to plank. Exhale with a soft chest and an engaged low belly to lower. Inhale, muscles along the spine to come up to back bend. And exhale, lift up and back to downward facing. Three deep breaths. Um, so it's, if it is that kind of fear of lack of love or connection, it also comes up when we're in our dominant identities and we do something to people who've been marginalized, right? Um, because you feel so much shame, like you've done something to harm someone. Um, and that can often make you feel like you're not deserving of love either, right? It's very hard to just say, um, for people who are marginalized, I've been told that there's something wrong with me, but there's not. And for people, um, 
I mean, and we all have marginalizations and dominant identities and how those wars start to bring the heat to the hands again. Um, and for people, uh, when we're in our dominant identities, not to think, I made a mistake, I was socialized into this, but I need to do better, but I'm still worthy of love, right? Like it's shame comes in there to stop us from being able to rationally act differently. From forward fold, we'll inhale to halfway. Exhale, keep the length in the low back as you fold. Inhale, root into the feet, come up to stand, stretch the fingertips. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale to reach. Exhale, bend and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, keep moving. One breath, one movement through your vinyasa. Protecting the low back by drawing your belly button up and in and softening the chest to let your upper back do the majority of the work here. breath and downward facing. And inhale the right heel up. Don't lift it any higher than you can while keeping your pelvis really aligned. So prioritize even pelvis side to side because as soon as you start to lift one side, your low back is a little out of alignment, um, which, you know, doing once probably isn't that big a deal, but if you do it over and over again, you're going to fix it. On an inhale, draw the right knee up and in. Squeeze it up and in towards the chest. Again, soften the chest. Hold yourself with your upper back. Draw the low belly up and in to lift the knee. And then exhale, bring the right foot to the right hand. I'm going to drop your back knee and come up into an Anjaneyasana. So you want a hips distance side to side between the feet. Squeeze the back knee and the front foot. Draw your low belly up and in. Really lengthen the low back. Stretch out through the sitting bones. If you're not getting any stretch for your quad, you're going to walk the right foot forward a little bit. Squeeze the back knee and the front foot. Lift the low belly up and in. Until you get to a place where you're getting some good stretch for your left quad. And then when you're there, keep squeezing the knee and the foot. Inhale, bring the fingertips up. Shoulder blades come together on the back. Draw the low ribs and the low belly in. Maybe look up a little. So <laughs> the good news here is that you all have a pretty good tool for coming out the other side of shame. And I don't think saying like, shame is bad, so we just shouldn't feel it is really the way to go. Because you can't tell people something's bad to feel, don't feel it. Otherwise those feelings just kind of get pushed down and can come back up again. Right. So exhale, left hand forward, right hand back. Keep squeezing the back knee and the front foot. Inhale up through the crown of the head. Exhale into the twist. Um, but you gotta process through so you can get to the other side of it because if you stay in shame, it's just not gonna get you anywhere. <laughs> you're gonna feel like you are worthless and if you feel like you're worthless, you're really not gonna be able to make any changes to make the whole thing better. Inhale, back to center, Let's exhale, hands down inside the right foot, squeeze the back knee and the front foot. Lengthen through the crown of the head, slowly lower the chest, but keep the length in the low back. So, um, yeah, you're doing it. Yoga is a good tool for processing through. It's a good tool for recognizing when something shows up in your body. It's a good tool for recognizing when certain things show up in your body. Don't go somebody else they did something bad <laughs> you know don't don't talk for a little bit and it's a really good tool for figuring out how to self-soothe 
in here, that feeling so that you can have a little bit more clarity about what's actually happening. Inhale, bring the torso back up. Walk the hands to frame the front foot. Straighten your front leg enough. I mean, move it towards straight, but you want to still keep your low back long. So if you've got two blocks, you can put them underneath your hands. I only have one, so I'm not going to do that. Um, if you don't have blocks or another solid support, you can come to your fingertips. Bend into the right leg as much as you need to so that you can still draw the right outer hip back and lengthen the low back. So you want your hips even side to side, like pelvis even, and then you want your low back to be able to extend out long as much as possible so you're not rounding over your leg. Press the right heel down, isometrically draw it back, so like pull it like you could pull it back, but it's not actually going to move on your mat. And then draw your belly button to your backbone, try to get your belly button more towards your right knee. Keep pressing out through the toe mound of the right foot and drawing back on the right outer hip. Having this practice, this practice of noticing what's happening in the body, the practice of noticing without immediately reacting, and the process of coming to learn your body enough that you can figure out what might be helpful to do with it to move you through something into more clarity is I think is a huge gift when it comes to shame. Doesn't mean it's easy, doesn't mean you just like, you do yoga so you just apply it. Um, and in fact, if you do a lot of yoga, you probably have more kinds of things like shame to deal with um, because we tend to do what we need, right? Walk the hands to the outside of the right foot. You're gonna turn the right toes to the right, press down into the right heel, keep drawing back, Try to get into that like outer hamstring on the right leg. Walk the hands back through center to the inside of the right foot. Now you're going to turn your toes in. Rotate the whole leg so you're not turning at the ankle or the knee. You're turning at your hip. Press the heel down. Draw it back. See if you can stretch into the inner hamstring on the right leg. Keep prioritizing evenness and the sacrum, the pelvis, and the low back. Walk the hands back to center, bend into the right leg, and tuck the back toes under, straighten the back leg, bring your right foot, and step back to downward facing. And then from downward facing dog, you're going to take whatever you want for vinyasa. Notice as you're moving today any self talk that comes up at all. Maybe practice this for the rest of the day too. Does your self talk sound like, oh, you know, what's wrong with me that I can never, I don't know, stay balanced in my anjana or something? Inhale, the left heel up. Toes point straight down, keep the pelvis even. And then inhale, draw the left knee up and in, squeeze it in. And then left foot to left hand. Drop the back knee. Squeeze the feet, inhale to your anjaneya. And again, adjust so that your feet are hips distance side to side, or your hip, if your knee and your foot, rather. And then squeeze the back knee and the front foot, draw the low belly up and in, keep moving the front foot forward and doing that until your back quad gets some good stretch and then reach up. Look up. Exhale, bring the right hand forward, left hand back. Um, to 
Okay, I'm noticing that um, self-talk, sorry, I think I stopped in the middle of what I was saying, um, about whether it's about you as a person, good or bad, or whether it's about just a thing. So maybe you're frustrated at Najanea, and you say, I wish I'd had more water before practice because sometimes that helps me balance better, right? Or, um, I would like to practice on Janae more so I can balance better and whatever it is, right? It's about the action, the thing, and not the you. And I'll back to center. Let's exhale, bring the hands down inside the left knee. Keep squeezing the back knee and the front foot. Lengthen up through the crown of the head. Lower the torso in a long line with your sacrum and pelvis as even as possible here until you get some stretch into your left outer hip. And you can notice this throughout the day. If you feel frustrated by something or if you feel like you've made a mistake, are you shaming yourself for it? Right? Um, and that's where our responsibility comes in. Or listening to someone else who has shamed you for it and then repeating those things about yourself. Or are you able to say, either what I did was not a problem and so you're wrong either brain or other person or what I did was wrong it was a problem or I wish I'd done something differently and I'll just figure out how to do it differently right those are two approaches that are different than telling yourself that you are wrong and again, not to, don't shame yourself if you are t telling yourself that you are wrong, just notice. It's, where it's part of the practice to just notice and not immediately react. And then walk the hands in, straighten the left leg, press down into the left heel, and isometrically draw it back. Bend as much as you need to into that left leg so you can draw the left outer hip back and keep the low back relatively long. Press out into the big toe mound, belly button to backbone, stretch the belly button towards the left knee. And so, for example, sometimes when I get misgendered repeatedly and I start to feel bad about it, I say to myself, "What? why are you even trying to get people to do this thing? Like, just, you know, you're silly, the world is the way it is, like maybe it doesn't fit you, but you should stop taking it so hard or stop expecting it, or you don't look right for what you're expecting people to do, right? Um, that's not good. That's like taking something that is a form of shaming, although it's not purposeful, usually, by the other people. Walk the hands to the outside of the left foot, Turn your toes to the left, press down into the left heel and isometrically draw it back. Um, but it is a form of shaming, right? It's a form of say saying you are not um, who you say you are or you do not deserve to be loved or in community as your authentic self, right? That I will tell you who you are in order to be accepted. And when it happens over and over, it does start to feel that way. So that's on the people who are doing the misgendering in the world that has taught them to do that. Walk your hands to the inside, turn your toes in, squeeze the knee and the foot, stretch into the inner thigh. Um, but what's on me is even when I feel bad and even when it feels like it is about me, to do something, move my body in a way, breathe, take a break from things, um, go see, well, now I can go see a friend sounds like so easy. It used to be so easy. Talk to a friend, <laughs> Zoom, um, you know, read a poem, walk the hands back to center, bend into the left leg, straighten your back leg and step back to downward facing. Take what you want for vinyasa. It's my responsibility to not recreate that shaming by saying it's about me. To get clear-headed enough to say, I am 
totally who I am. <laughs> and that is a completely legitimate thing to want people to recognize. And I, I didn't deserve that. I did not deserve to be misgendered repeatedly. It was not about anything that I did or who I am. Bring the knees wide, feet together, and sit back. Lengthen the low back. So that doesn't mean that I avoid anger. And I might say I didn't deserve that and feel very angry at the people who <laughs> misgendered me. Um, but it takes it out of a sense of um, like this dehumanizing feeling un unlovable is a way of dehumanizing yourself and that's not a useful practice. Anger just tells you something's wrong and you know can be uncomfortable but it's often um, a catalyst for change as well. When you're on your press back to downward facing Inhale, the right heel up. If you are comfortable taking the low back twist here, it can feel really good for your low back, but you know, for other people it's less comfortable. So really make a choice about what's good for your low back. If you wanna lift the right hip over the left and bend into the right knee, you might be able to get a little hip flexor stretch and some twists for the low back. Just make sure you're not sinking down into the left shoulder. Or you can just stay in your three dog very neutral, which is also great for your low back. And then inhale, bring the left knee up and in, squeeze it in. Spring right foot um, to the right hand. We're gonna start this time in um, crescent, but you can bring your blanket or your towel down because we're gonna come back down into Anjanae so you can put it under your back knee. Squeeze the feet. Again, neutralize the pelvis. Bend as much as you need to in your back knee so that your low back can be long. Reach the fingertips up and then sit down to that right sitting bone. Keep squeezing the feet and then you're gonna slowly lower the back knee down. So it's a way to intensify the stretch in the back quad by really engaging it all the way down. Keep squeezing the feet. When your knee comes down, squeeze the knee and the foot. And then maybe look up, give yourself a little back bend here. Keep the back bend in the upper back so you don't wanna um, take this in the low back at all. And then maybe you bring the right hand down to the right quad and stretch a little over towards the right. Again, don't overstretch the hip flexor of the quad. That was a lot coming into it. neutral. I'm going to bring the hands down to frame your front foot. Grab blocks if you have them. Keep squeezing the feet and straighten both legs to come up into pyramid. And I'm going for some deep stretch into the hamstring this time. If you don't have two blocks, bend as much as you need to into the right leg and draw back on the right outer hip so that your pelvis is neutral, low back is long. And then bring your belly button to your backbone. Bring it more towards the right knee. Ready, you're going to start to walk the hands around towards the left. Come into a Prasarya Padasanasana, wide legged forward fold. Squeeze the inner inches of the feet, lengthen the low back. Again, bend as much as you need to into the knees. So this can be a nice low back lengthener and good for the hamstrings. I said, you know, there's the shame that kind of, um, not kind of, there's shame that does get projected onto people in marginalized positions, um, including queer and trans people. And I gave a 
than the mildest version of shaming that I could because I, it's a really triggering emotion. I don't necessarily want to put everybody into their worst trauma right now while they're practicing. Um, but we all know how it happens to us, right? Walk the hands around, keep going towards the left. You're gonna come into um, your pyramid pose on the second side facing the back of the mat. So squeeze the feet, make sure you've got the hips distance side to side, draw back on your left outer hip. Bend into the left knee as much as you need to to keep your back nice and long. Stretch out through the crown of the head, draw back on the left outer hip, and then belly button to backbone, belly button comes towards your left knee. The one that we, I think, notice less maybe, um, and even might have a harder time working through the shame of, right? Like, once I get out of that shameful feeling around being trans, it's pretty easy for me to be like, uh, I like being trans, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and that's not true for everyone, but it just, I just have to get through the emotional feeling. Um, but in my dominant identities, it's harder. <laughs> I am more responsible for the violence, right? I can't just say, like, I didn't deserve to feel that. I have to have a different narrative for negotiating it. Squeeze the feet. You know, bend into the right leg. And then inhale up to crescent on the second side. And bring your towel or blanket underneath your right knee now. Look up, give yourself a little back bend. Maybe you bring the right, sorry, left hand to the left thigh and reach up a little. Come back to neutral, keep squeezing the feet. We're gonna come down into our Anjanea, which I realize isn't the exact same direction we did it, or order, but we need to come from standing to back knee down. Once your knee's down, keep squeezing the back knee and the front foot. Look up. Maybe you bring the hand down, left hand down and right hand up. Again, only doing what you need to to get a little extra stretch. <laughs> but not more than you need to. Come back to neutral. Frame your front foot. Uh, we'll come back around the other direction here. So I was going to straighten the back leg, walk the hands back through Prasarna. Squeeze the arms to the feet, lift the hips, lengthen out through the crown of the head. Let the low back be long. And then walk all the way back around so you're facing what was the front side of your mat originally. You're going to step back and then lift your left heel up. So we get this opportunity for the low back twist on the second side. You can stay here practicing your three dog or you can lift the left hip on top of the right and bend into the left leg. You're ready, bring the left foot down. Take whatever you would like here for your vinyasa. the child's pose for a few breaths, knees wide, feet together, sit the hips back, lengthen the low back. So an example of this kind of second form of shame, and I'll just use the same example that Brene Brown was using because I am a white person and I think it comes up around whiteness a lot, although it also comes up around class privilege pretty frequently for me. Um, which is 
I, you know, make an offhand comment about something and someone points out to me that there were kind of white supremacist assumptions in it, that it's a racist thing to say, right? And I immediately feel shameful. And Brown is saying, like, this happens. <laughs> and I think um, when Robin DeAngelo describes white fragility, she's also kind of describing this response. But again, I think it happens a lot of mark or with a lot in a lot of our dominant identities and how come back up to downward facing dog stretch out through the heels lift the hips and then you're going to inhale forward to plank and then come down to a forearm plank we're going to hold it for uh few breaths so feel free to come in and out as you need to you can have your knees up or down um you want to keep your hips at least even with your shoulders, if not above them, but not so far up that you kind of lose the core engagement. Soften the chest, use the upper back, belly, inner thighs. So um, this, you know, so that situation happens and I feel shame. And, um, you know, one thing that Brown's talk got me thinking about is, well, it would make sense because I know enough to fear that that could cause me lack of connection, lack of community, lack of love, right? Because I know that that's what racism does. And so if I'm participating in it, how can I be lovable? How can I be less wild? How can I be a good person? And like all that stuff starts to come up. Um, and I don't think there's a way of just saying, Oh, don't do that. Don't feel the way, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's kind of built into the system, but then if I stay there, I'm going to eventually have to push it back out. So bring your knees down if they're not already, belly button to backbone, come down into your Sphinx pose. You want your forearms parallel, elbows under your shoulders, draw the low belly up and in, and then press the shoulder blades forward to help open the front of the chest. So again, in that situation, like I was born into being a white person in a white dominated racist society, um, that possibility for lack of love and connection was not something that I personally created. Um, but I have a lot of responsibility <laughs> for working through the shame that comes up around it because that that's what that shame is designed to do is to come up and then for me to just blame somebody else or run away from it or try not to notice it which means not noticing the racism which means like perpetuating the problem and again i think we can think about yoga and meditation and mindfulness practices as really useful in relationship to social justice we think about how important they are for processing through that kind of shame. Let's bring the chin over towards the right shoulder, draw back on the left. Bring the chin to the left shoulder, draw back on the right. Come back to center and then you're gonna exhale, come down onto your belly, turn your head off to one side. Take three really deep breaths into your low back. Lift your third exhale. Turn the head back to neutral. Squeeze the inner thighs. I'm going to roll your shoulders up and back. Use the muscles along the spine. And then stretch the fingertips back behind. Try to soften your glutes. Soften your low back as much as possible. You're still engaging the low back, but you're not squeezing it. Right? So any crunching, come down a little bit. But then use those muscles to help lift the shoulders.
exhale, bring the head down. You can bring it off to the other side. I'm gonna keep doing the same side because my air pod is in there, but switch it up. And then three deep breaths into the low back. Bring the chin back to neutral, squeeze the inner thighs, low belly button to backbone, roll up and back. This time, if you want to, if it's comfortable to reach back and interlace the hands and use that to maybe get a little bit more opening in the chest, you can. Exhale, release, head comes off to the side. Three deep breaths, really inflating the low back. Making space there. And then one more time, head to neutral. Belly button to backbone, squeeze the inner thighs. Use the muscles along the spine to roll the shoulders up and back. Maybe you just stretch the fingertips back. Maybe you interlace. And then maybe you keep the toes where they are or lift them just a little. It's not like you're trying to lift them towards the ceiling, but just like you're trying to stretch them more towards the back of whatever's behind your mat. Soften the glutes. Engage the muscles along the spine, belly button to backbone. Exhale down one more time. <laughs> Sorry, out through the mouth. Lift your heels up and then gently drop the heels to one side and then the other. And encouraging the low back to stay as soft as possible. Now tuck the toes under, frame the rib, rib cage with your hands, and you're going to press just to hands and knees, resist the um, impulse to go back into a child's pose, okay? Just press to hands and knees. Pause, lengthen the low back. Do a couple really gentle cat cows. Drop the belly, lift the crown of the head and the sitting bones. Exhale to round. Inhale, drop the belly. Exhale to round. Come back to neutral. You're gonna widen the feet, keep the knees really bent, and then send your sitting bones up and back. So you're in a super low down dog, and then you can straighten into one heel, pedal into the other, and then slowly walk yourself into your downward facing dog. Look forward towards your hands and walk the feet slowly up. Try to keep as much length in the backs of the legs and the low back as you can. And then walk the feet all the way up and through the hands. Come back down to lying on your back. Have your prop with you. We're going to take that same twist we took at the beginning of class. Inhale, bring the right knee up and in, gently squeeze it in. And then exhale, bring the right knee across the body with the left hand, over down towards the floor on the left side. Again, put as much height as you need to be comfortable underneath the knee. 
and support the right shoulder. Either have it all the way down or have your forearm supporting it. Take some deep breaths into the low back. One last thing that I was thinking about this awareness about at least one connection between shame for me um, when I experience grand phobia and then when I tell someone like so let's go back to the misgendering example not that that's not traumatic but it's less so than a lot of other things that happen to trans people um, and queer people so let's say I get misgendered and then I point it out to somebody and instead of the person saying, oh, thanks, um, I'm sorry and I won't do that again and you didn't deserve that, which is like what I would love to hear. Um, they say, well, it's really hard or um, I didn't mean it. I, I, don't, I don't think I said that. I don't, think, I don't think that was me. You know, and then I'm like, oh, great. Now you've just made it worse. Now I've told you and you've made it worse. <laughs> Exhale. Breath, relax the right hip flexor and inner thigh. And then draw the left knee up and in. Squeeze it in. Use the right hand to guide the left knee across and down. Put as much height underneath the knee as you need to gently rest. And then breathe deep into the low back. So if I can think to myself, okay, that person's not just being a jerk, um, but they are experiencing shame because they realize they've done something harmful and they're afraid that they're not gonna be loved. And actually like really helps me give them a little bit of space and forgiveness and not like take it back on myself. You know, I'm not saying that's, you know, work through your shame. If you are that person, just say, yep. And then when you're ready, come back and say, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> and um, I won't do it again. And you didn't deserve it. Uh, you, know, you don't have to speak immediately in the moment and you can work through it. But I'm just saying when it does happen, um, and it does, I think I just cannot imagine there being um, a trans person in the world who hasn't experienced that at least once. just for yourself. You know, you don't have to like forgive the other person for it, but it makes a little bit more space for me, for everybody else's humanity, and that everyone in the end really wants to feel like they are worthy of love. And our world just is not set up to help us get there in a lot of ways. Exhale. Gently draw both knees in. Just give yourself a little squeeze, lengthen the low back. And go ahead and get set up for Shavasana. You can take any Shavasana you would like, um, but I would recommend either a supported low bridge. So take your prop, slide it under your low back and rest the low back, or knees together, feet apart with some support underneath the outer hips. So if you take Sukta Baddha Konasana, feet together, knees apart, roll up a blanket or a towel and put it outside your hips so that they're supported. Once you're down, take a deep breath into the low belly. Exhale, sigh out to the mouth. And just let everything settle for a few breaths in Shavasana.
like to take some deeper breaths into the little belly. And then have a breath out. If you have your feet together and knees wide, use your hands to draw the knees up and in. If you're on any props, you can gently roll to the side or lift or move them. And then draw your knees in towards your chest. And roll to one side. And press yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Make sure you've got enough height to keep your low back nice and long. I'm going to try to prioritize that for the rest of your day if you can. Let's bring hands together at heart center. Give yourself a little extra love after any kind of meditation on shame extra reminder that you are lovable and loved and loving and completely worthy as you are. Deep breath together into the low belly. Exhale, sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> Let your chin come towards your chest. Have a wonderful week, and thank you.